What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! Oh, hmm. Uh, it's a little different, but it's the same person. Uh, no, but it's still a different band, though. Different indie. Okay, so. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just having an argument with myself, and I lost. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I always lose. Anyway, uh, making their debut on the channel tonight. Tonight. We have Senri Kawaguchi Band. Yes, indeed. How about that? Senri Kawaguchi Band making their debut on the channel. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined to doing all of the clicks and the likes and the bibbity bibbity bop, do me a favor. Before you do all that stuff, Please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, feel free to click away. I know we've had Senri Kawaguchi on the channel before. I, I know we have, and we had Senri uh, Kawaguchi Triangle, but we've never had Senri Kawaguchi Band, so. That's how we're having the debut here. This comes as a request from Home Gnome, and this is actually one of Home Gnome's three prioritized requests for the month of September for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So, here you go, Home Gnome. Hope you enjoy the show, man. Home Gnome wanted to see me react to this it is Senrei Kawaguchi Band, not Triangle, Band, with a song called Raging Spur. Now, have I heard the song before? No. I have not. To the best of my knowledge, this does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, wait a second. Yeah, I've heard this song before. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was posted by Senrei Kawaguchi. Surprise, surprise. And the video has 74,000 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Raging Spur, Senri Kawaguchi Band, I have no idea. Uh, 2023, oh, so January 6th, 2023, or is it June 1st, 2023? I think it's January 6th. Don't quote me on that. Uh, at Blues Alley, Japan. Cool. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this.
Okay, let's pause there. <laughs> it sounds like somebody is gonna take take a solo here. I'm not not hundred percent sure who. If I had to guess, I'm gonna say Sax is gonna take it. Um, this is cooking. This is definitely cooking. Not at all. What I was expecting. I was expecting more of a classic jazz style, like swing style uh, type of a song or something like that. This is this is. If I'm being honest, folks. This feels more rock to me than than jazz. Uh, very straight ahead with the drum pattern. It, it's got a shuffle feel, yeah, but it's pushing. It's really pushing. Uh, I like that. I like what's happening with the bass and the guitar as well. A lot of unison happening between the guitar, bass, and keyboard. Uh, but what I'm loving about the bass player is he's playing the notes, but he's playing them in the lower in the lower register down the neck. Um, in recent reactions that I've done this the, the past few days, uh, I've seen a lot of bass players who. I don't know why. I, I I do not understand why, but they feel like at least this is what it seems to me, and this is how I'm seeing it. It it feels like whenever they're gonna do something in unison, the bass players feel compelled to go up on the neck and do it. And I've never had a problem with bass players going up on the neck. My problem is when bass players stay up there on the neck, and it's not a solo. Because now you've lost the bottom end, you know you, you've lost you've lost the bass tone because you're up here on the neck. And I've always had an issue with bass players to do that. Like I said, I got no problem going up on the neck. I love going up on the neck for a measure, maybe two tops, and then I like to go back down to the lower register and fill out the sound and get that low end covered. Um, he has gone up on the neck. He has done everything down here down there what and i love that i love it it's for two reasons one you're keeping the low end two you're while keeping the low end he is still playing the unison lines with the guitar and the keyboard he's not making any sacrifices he's doing the best of both worlds and i love that i absolutely dig that uh guitar playing sounds nice the keyboard playing sounds nice the sax player she looks familiar. I feel like I've seen her somewhere. Is she one of the Jazz Avengers? I I think she might be the I think she might be the tenor sax player from the Jazz Avengers. My favorite one out of the out of the four. I think I think this is her. Uh I'm almost I'm almost positive it is. Uh I've always liked her style of playing. She's got like a cross. I, she's got like a cross between Michael Brecker and Lenny Pickett. It, she's 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 able to honk on that man. She's able to get it to honk absolutely, but at the same time, she also has some really nice melodic lines that she very much like like Michael Brecker does, who is notorious for starting a melodic line, stopping it in order to get a subdivision pattern going as well as melodic pattern. So it's not just straight eighth notes. Like she'll she'll start a, a pattern and she'll be like, you know, three or four eighth notes, stop for two bit for uh, for two eighth notes and then come back in and continue on into the next measure. Stuff like that. Uh that Michael Brecker was very known for. Um I I really dig her style, man. I really do. Um I remember the first time I heard the Jazz Avengers and I heard her, I was like, ah, I can already tell you she's my favorite uh, out, of, out of the four sax players. And uh, it's good to see her here. I, I'm, I'm really glad to see her here. She's, she sounds good. Now, overall, I got no complaint with this. None. It's, it's a fun tune. It sounds good. It's cooking. It's moving. Um, not at all what I was expecting, but that's cool. I, I'm digging it nonetheless. Let's keep going here. If I'm right about the solo. Oh! I was not. Wow. 
Wow. Wait. 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 They were all playing in unison. Guitar, sax, bass, keyboard. They were all playing in unison on the I gotta go back and hear that again. No! No! I don't care! Hey! It's my show! If I wanna go back, we're gonna go back. Okay, so I was wrong about the solo, but I think we got something better than a solo. We got a unison line that was smoking. Holy cow. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Pick it up right where she left off. the field girl nice job get those slurs oh yeah Get fly the bumblebee in there. Move it on. I guess I I just I don't want to pause but if I don't I could end up in some real trouble so um that was fun that was fun watching her and the keyboard player starting off with trading eights and what was really kind of fun is it didn't happen every time but everyone a, a couple of times she would finish off and the keyboard player would pick up right where she finished off same note same progression same rhythmic feel, and he would continue on and add his own spin to it. And then when he would pass it back, she would take it, and it was really nicely done. Starting off on trading eights, going to trading fours, going to trading twos, and then just eventually just playing in unison with each other at the same time. Really fun to watch. Really fun to watch. Especially the one section where she went to drill this. I'm like, wow. 
Wow, that was fantastic. That was fun. <laughs> um, behind them, drumming, very solid. Love what's happening there. Bass player is doing a great job with the walking bass line. I like everything he's doing. Not drawing attention to himself, but keeping it moving and, and playing all the right notes in the in the changes. Uh, guitar player doing a really good job keeping the chordal patterns going, just sustaining chords. Um, it feels like he is doing somewhat of a rhythmic pattern. He's going to sustain, chord, chord, sustain, chord, chord, sustain. And it, it feels really nice filling out the sound the way he's doing it. Um, I like everything I'm hearing, man. I, I'm digging it. Not my favorite uh, jazz piece I've heard on the channel. It's not my favorite one, but it's it's good. It's it's cooking. It's moving. It's shaking. And I got absolutely no issue with anything I'm hearing. So let's keep going here. Let me back. Actually, let me back up just a little bit. Let me get back into it. Yeah, let the guitar player take it. Look at the control on that right hand. Stop. Stop. Look at his right hand. It barely moves. I mean, barely moves. Back a little bit more. Look at that. That's all hammer on and paw on for the most part. Yikes. As they say in jazz, there are no wrong notes. <laughs> it's just color. <laughs> it's a little extra color, you know? <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. Absolutely good times. Good times have by all. Looks like everybody on stage was having fun playing with each other. Um, Not really a lot to talk about that I didn't talk about during the reaction, unfortunately. So we may have a short review here. Let me get my thoughts together. I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Senri Kawaguchi Band, not Triangle, Band, uh, with a song called Raging Spur. This was a request from Home Gnome, and this was actually one of Home Gnome's three prioritized requests for the month of September for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So, there you go, Home Gnome. Hope you enjoyed the show, man. This was fun. <laughs> this was fun. I've, okay, I've heard better jazz performances on the channel. I've heard more impressive jazz performances on the channel. 
but this one was fun it was fun this was a lot of fun to listen to and a lot of fun to watch it looked like everybody was having a good time on stage and everybody was enjoying playing with each other on stage so you, you can feel that man. A, 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 in the crowd or even as just sit, watching the video like I am right here you could tell and there's a difference between having fun on stage and having fun playing with the people you're playing with on stage I have worked for a number of bands where I've had fun playing on stage I've had fun being on stage but I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of the people I was playing with on stage it doesn't always work out that way <laughs> it, it does in a perfect world you would enjoy playing the songs you're playing you would enjoy playing in front of the crowd you're playing in front of and you would enjoy playing with the band that you're playing with it i'm not saying it never happens it, it, it usually does you know usually but there there will be gigs where you are literally doing it for the paycheck and you really don't like the music, you really don't like the band, but you've been hired, you, you're, you're, you're being paid to play in front of a crowd, and you can have fun on the stage, you can have fun playing in front of the crowd, but you don't necessarily like the music, and you, you may not even like the people you're playing with. It does happen. So when you see band members having fun with each other, playing some great music, having a good time on stage, and showing it to the crowd, that's always a good thing to see and I'm, I'm telling you right now it does make a difference from a audience member standpoint when you are having fun with everybody and you're having fun playing it it does make a difference it is definitely noticeable um but as far as what we're going to discuss there really is not a whole lot that i didn't cover during the reaction so this is probably going to be a short review so no offense intended to anybody. I mean, uh, well, you'll see what I mean. Let's start off with the score first. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.7. Yep, 8.7. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, first things first. An 8.7, what does that mean? Well... An 8.7 would translate to a great scale rating, so I think this was a great song. Uh, it would also get four to five stars in an A letter grade. So there you go, an 8.7, great scale rating, four to five stars in an A letter grade. Now, how did I come up with that score? <laughs> so glad you asked. Okay, um, biggest thing for me was, uh, like I said, watching. It looked like everybody was having a good time. It looked like everybody was enjoying the overall experience. The song they were playing, the venue they were playing in, the crowd they were playing in front of, and the people they were playing with. It looked like everybody was enjoying themselves 100%. So that's a big deal. I know that sounds silly, but trust me when I say this, folks, it is a big deal, okay? Um, as far as the song goes, not at all what I was expecting. I, I saw Senre Kawaguchi band and I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're gonna do some jazz. We're gonna have some jazz. And I, I saw the band, I'm like, okay, we're in a jazz band setup. We got the drummer, we got the bass player, we got a guitar player, we got the keyboard player, and we got a tenor sax player who looks very familiar. Now, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I swear that looks like the tenor sax player from, uh, from the Jazz Avengers. Uh, I've out of the four sax players from the Jazz Avengers, I like her the most. I like the tenor sax player the most. Um, I feel like she's got a really nice blend between, like I said, Le uh, Lenny Pickett and Michael Brecker. I, I think she's got a really nice blend between those two. Maybe, I mean, I, I know Tom Scott's really more of an alto sax player, but I do also hear just a little bit of Tom Scott in her playing as well. Um, but I've always enjoyed her from the first time I saw her uh, play live. I, I I dug her playing style, and it really came through here. Man, I, I thought I knew what she was capable of doing in Jazz Avengers. No, no, not even close. Jazz Avengers doesn't even scratch the surface of what she's capable of doing. I am really glad Home Gnome gave me this video because I really got to see her in more of a capacity of what she's capable of. And boy, 
is she capable of some honking? My goodness. Uh, I loved watching the trading eights and the trading fours and the trading twos between her and the keyboardist. They really flowed off each other really well. Uh, both of them, they both did a fantastic job. I really liked it though when they would, it, they didn't do this every time. It was really more the keyboardist than it was her. But uh, when, for example, that she would play, you know, her, her eight measures and in her final measure, she would, you know, come up to a note or come down to a note and then the keyboard player would pick up on that note and pick up right where she left off and take his solo from there. Um, I like that. I really like that. You don't see that happen too often. You really gotta be in sync with each other to really know what's what's gonna happen because you kinda gotta know where she's gonna end so you can come in on that note. It's not always easy to do, folks. You gotta, you gotta be able to read each other. Uh, and that's very, very cool. The bass player. Gotta give a shout out to him. Not only was he a solid bassist, I mean, absolutely solid. I, I, I don't even, I, that's the wrong word. He is a great bass player. Let's just call it, let's just call it spade a spade. Um, and the number one reason I really enjoyed what he did was because I never even saw him. Now, maybe he did and I just didn't notice. I didn't see it. He never came up on the neck, not once. He stayed down on the neck in the bass register the whole time even when they were playing in unison. And you would think a lot of bass players, when doing unison lines, what do they do? They come up on the neck, not this cat. This guy stayed down on the neck, keeping the low end nice and fat. And I love that. I love that. And he still played the unison line. He still did. He still played the same notes. He just did it an octave down. What a novel concept. You know, you'd be amazed how many bass players don't understand that though. He does. <laughs> he knows what he should be doing. Uh, the guitar player, very nice job. I was really impressed during his little, he, he didn't solo for very long, but when he did his guitar solo, I was really impressed with his right hand and how disciplined it was. Not moving around a whole lot, just moving just what was needed. Uh, no over-exaggerated strumming or picking. I mean, there were times where his right hand really didn't move at all, and that's when I was like, oh, he must be relying on hammer-ons and pull-offs. He was still picking a little bit, but it was so subtle. I mean, I was like, wow, that is that is discipline right there. That is clean technique. Um, and when he wasn't soloing, he was filling out the sound with the chords, especially during the, uh, the tenor sax and, and keyboard player trading off. It really came down to him and the bass is kind of filling out the sound to keep the song full and then it never sounded hollow. It never sounded empty. So really nice job on his part. Uh, the drumming. Wow. That, that, that pattern. It, it, it's <laughs> again, I, this goes back to expectation. I was expecting more of a jazz style song, a little more of a, maybe like a swing style or something like that, or, you know, straight ahead on the ride. But uh, this was more of like a, like a, like a rock and feel like this, this, this had much more of a rock feel than it did jazz feel. I mean, the jazz was there. Definitely. We had like a shuffle feel going like a backbeat four. And it was like, nice. I like this. This is really good for people who people have asked me on the channel a number of times because I've mentioned I'm a big jazz. I'm a big fan of jazz music. People have asked me, uh, where would be a good place to start as someone who likes rock and metal? Where would be a good place to start to their journey into jazz? This is not a bad place to start. Let me tell you, this, this, this is not a bad way to begin your journey. It's a nice transition, uh, a nice bridge piece between rock and jazz. So if you guys ever have, if you have a friend who would like to get into jazz, but is more of a rock and metal guy, this, Remember this, this is this is a good way to go. A nice hybrid between the two. Um, I, I really enjoyed everything about this. Everybody across the board did a great job. The songwriting, the soloing, the playing off of each other, a nice, fun atmosphere that they all created together. It was a great job overall. And that's why I'm giving this the great score of 8.7.
It's not the most impressive jazz performance I've seen on the channel, but it was one of the most fun ones I've had on the channel for sure. So yeah, 8.7, I feel good with that score and that's where we're gonna stay. So let's wrap everything up here in a nice shiny bow, shall we? We got an 8.7, which is a great scale rating, four to five stars and an A letter grade. Take your pick, I don't care. Whichever one of those floats your boat. Final word, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hope I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, well then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's gonna do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later, peace.